What's happening my fellow geeks and geek outs? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today marks part 10 in the road to Red Hood. This is the episode I've been waiting for, you've been waiting for. We are going to do the final reveal of my 3D printed Red Hood helmet. <laughs> Finally! It is done. It is taking me a very long time to get to this point. A lot of engineering and working it out, brainstorming, you name it but it's finally done. So today's video is obviously about the process of painting it, weathering it, putting the lenses in, how I put the magnets in with the help of Miles, and then we're gonna move out to the garage, I'm gonna pop the muscle chest on, the neck piece, the helmet, the jacket, and also the ammo pouches for the torso, and show you guys how this thing works in motion. Now firstly, the paint job. Now I was going to be using a metallic car paint from Super Cheap Auto, and after filling it, sanding it, doing all the body work on it. Um, I was ready to drop the ball and then my mate Lucas who was badge 3D suggested you know you really should use the Rust-Oleum Prime because these car paints can react and flake and crack off so honestly I didn't want to take the chance whatsoever. I've come this far with the helmet so what I did was I just used a Rust-Oleum Red. I did put three layers of the Rust-Oleum Grey Primer over the uh, filler primer from Super Cheap Auto and then went to town and it just came up an absolute treat. I'm actually glad I went with this paint over the car paint. The saddest part was weathering this thing, but I'll get to that in a minute. Now, if you can see on the sides here, we've got the temples. That is just um, like rubber matting that you put down in the back of a pickup truck or for your toolbox or something. This was like seven bucks from Bunnings. Just cut it out and glued it on the inside. As you can also see there, we've got some very thin foam, but it kind of just helps to stop the helmet doing the head bobble effect if you turn your head so it keeps it in place. The biggest conundrum I had with the helmet was the back plate because it was kind of an odd shape and I had to heat it up a couple of times with a heat gun to reform it and to make sure it was going to fit flush with uh, the side ears here. So what I ended up doing, if you can see in the back there, I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, see that piece of foam right there? So it's sticking uh, to the main body of the helmet and also to the back plate and the beauty part is it flexes just the littlest bit and that's all you need and seriously it helps with putting this helmet on. Now comes the beauty part and something I would have been completely lost on if I had done this on my own. So Miles ordered me some high quality magnets, some very strong magnets off Flea Bay. That's what I call eBay. So the idea was to have this magnetized and you can see right here with the lenses it just pops out like so. So I've incorporated the lenses into the face plate so they kind of slide into the main body of the helmet and I will demonstrate that but for now I'll show you guys. So there we go, they're in the magnets there, there and there. Now these were epoxied in place with the same stuff that we used to glue the body of the helmet together and then I just went in and sanded it back down just so it wasn't really jaggedy. Now in terms of the lenses it's just blue acrylic perspex that I heated up with a heat gun and formed it to the inside of the faceplate. Now it was very touch and go in terms of trying to get it to fit on the inside of the helmet like so. So I'll show you guys how it works. What you have to do is you have to start here at the nose and then clips in like so. How cool is that? And then release like so. Magneto, Red Hood. <laughs> now we've also got the fasteners and fittings here. Most of these are pop rivets. This is a part of a grommet set which snapped on perfectly to the inside of the side gaskets. And these pieces here, are, it's just a screw and a washer glued together. And even though the foam's covering it, what I did was I left some of the thread exposed and I could go over with some filler that would lock it in place from the inside, as well as lock tighting all these pieces in place. Now that I think about it, I actually still have to go in and just slightly weather all these pieces. They have had a light sanding, but they still need a bit of grime around them, maybe even some rust rings. Now in terms of the weathering, it was quite heartbreaking to do because this thing just looks so pristine and nice. It was like a brand new Ferrari and you've got a sandpaper paper away certain parts. It was kind of heartbreaking, but it had to be done. So what I did firstly was sandpaper anywhere I want there to be exposed metal. And obviously it exposed the gray primer, but it was too dull looking. So I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but I just went back over and dry brushed some Model Masters Chrome Silver over all the areas. And there's still some scuffing that I still want to add to the helmet. But for now, I'm absolutely stoked with it. I'll just give you guys a nice look at the back of the helmet too. And seriously, it's so comfortable to wear. I'll try it on now, 
So what we're gonna do after this, I'm gonna give you guys some nice, up close, high quality shots of the helmet, um, add in some natural lighting. We're then gonna move to the garage, like I said, try this helmet on. With the rest of the upper part of the costume, I'm gonna put the eye mask on as well, because it just, it all syncs up perfectly. Like, you couldn't have asked for a better fitting helmet. And seriously, it just slides on so easily, like this. The only problem is, the lenses tend to fog up a bit, but, I'll work around it, it's fine. And then we slip it out like so. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, fuck, I nearly fell off my stool again. And it's, it, it kind of like hugs your cheeks. It's kind of like when your Nana squeezes your cheeks when you're a little kid. I'm kind of like goofy trying to put it back on when I don't have a mirror in front of me. So I'm using the viewfinder. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Now, one thing I will have to do is get a very thin balaclava to go under the neck piece because some of my uh, hair, now that it's getting longer, tends to want to stick out even though the neck piece is on, which isn't a big deal at all. You can get, you know, like lycra balaclavas and hoods and all that, so that's an easy fix right there. So guys, like I said, what we're gonna do now is show you some high quality up close shots of the helmet and the inside of the helmet to show you guys how it works and functions. And then of course, we're gonna move out to the shitty looking garage, give a bit of a move, bit of a back alley feel, and then show you guys the helmet in proper form and motion. Because of the overwhelming response with this helmet, people have been asking, will you be offering the file? Will you be offering blank castings and completed helmets? And the answer is yes. So starting now, I have started offering the files for this helmet to 3D print on my Etsy store. I will leave the link down below. So the way it works, um, upon payment, I will send you an email with all three files. That is the back plate, the main body of the helmet, and of course the face plate. These then can be uploaded to a 3D printer, sent to Shapeways, you name it. They can also be rescaled because this is obviously scaled to fit my head, which is 22 and a half inches, but there is some room for 23, 23 and a half. But like I said, it can be rescaled to whatever size you guys want. The next step is for me and Miles to re print this helmet we're going to clean it up again but this time for molding so that way we can make kits we can make completed helmets so watch this space guys eventually kits and completed helmets are coming but for the meantime i have started offering the files like i said i will leave the link down below guys thank you so much for watching as always very happy with the end result um i don't know what's going to happen after this episode i guess we're just going to try and organize a photo shoot somewhere but for now i am so happy with the progress of this cosplay and i can't thank you guys enough for joining me along for the journey of the road to Red Hood. Guys, wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a fantastic day. I hope you're well, hope you're happy, be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.